Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we're going to continue our look at Geronism, seven ways you can tell the moon landings were faked. Today we're going to start off with the actual landing sites. So let's see what he has to say. One of the funnier things I've ever seen. You can see the landing sites for yourself, which real quick, let's just remember, we have a piece of the moon here to study. And this is how you can tell for yourself that the moon landing really happened because some guys say that there's moon rocks that none of us have ever seen. Uh, put it this way, nobody listening to this show right now and nobody who will listen to it in the coming days has ever seen a moon rock. Now, this is something that I truly dislike about those in Flat Earth. It's the absolute concrete ideation and literal interpretation of everything that they try and debunk. And by applying a strict literal definition to something or other, and then arguing against that literal definition, they seem to somehow equal Flat Earth. Now, here's the problem that you run into. Literally hundreds of thousands of people have seen moon rocks in museums. Now, in our last episode, I brought up this website, which contains every sample brought back by the Apollo mission. Now, let's just click on one of them. Here's the rock. Here is the entire description of what the rock is, where it was found, etc. And it's extraordinarily detailed. I mean, right where it was laying on the moon and an exact chemical composition of it. So yes, anybody can go to this website and look up a particular moon rock, one that they saw in a museum, and they can compare it to what they see on the description for that individual moon rock. So this is something that literally anyone can do. The fact that Jaron chooses not to do it does not disprove the fact the data is right there. Anyway, you can see the landing sites for yourself. What? How, wh where can you see that? Well, once again, here we fall into the trap of the absolutely strict literal interpretation of a statement. Anyone can verify the Apollo landing sites for themselves. You combine this with the flat earth you can't verify anything unless you walk up to it and touch it. So obviously bacteria, light, things like that that we can't actually physically touch or see don't exist. So all you have to do is type in high resolution moon landing sites and here they all are. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of these. And if you look right here, here's all six of them. Right there, Apollo 11. 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. You can see the base of the ascent module from the lunar module. You can see vehicle tracks and footprints. You can see equipment left on the moon. It's all right here. And these are easily searchable images and they're freely available on the internet. Anybody can verify these for themselves. Now for anybody that says that you can't see this from space, this is my house right here. Do you see the two canoes in my backyard? The fire pit? My wife's garden right here? This is a swing set that we have in the backyard. This is the chimney on my fireplace. That's my pontoon boat right up here. And this is the lake that we live on. This lighthouse out here is a decorative lighthouse that's less than 15 feet high. And if you look right over here, this is a dedication stone that's three feet wide. This is from space. So to say that you can't see footprints and equipment left on the moon from just 15 miles up with a designated camera designed to picture fine detail on the surface of the moon is just ridiculous. These are swings and benches. Look at the level of detail that we get from something that is from six times the altitude. And by the way, just moving over a little bit to the park, you see my house is over here. If you move over here to the park, look at the detail that you see in these cars. You can see the windshield on that. And there's a person. There's somebody just walking on a path. Of course you can see this sort of detail. 
you can see the second base on this baseball field. You can actually see first and third as well. So to suggest that you can't see the, the uh, base of the lunar module on the moon is just disingenuous. Uh, even today, you can still spot the landing sites for the Apollo missions on the surface of the moon. Images collected by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and published in 2011 sharply illustrate. Notice the word sharply. Okay, we're going to look at these images right now. The touchdown points of the Apollo 12, 14, and 17 lunar landers as astronauts made their way to the ground, as well as paths taken by those crews as they walked and rode around the surface of the moon. A year later, NASA went on to publish other LRO images of the Apollo 11 site. You know, when I was working in Alaska back in 2007, 2008, 2009, uh, I was involved with some people that were taking images of a volcano that was erupting. And they had a special camera on that that could actually measure the swelling of the ground. This camera was accurate enough to, from 20,000 feet, be able to measure the thickness of the paint on a runway. We have uh, some of the most stunning images of the lunar surface that I've ever seen. Yeah, what are you talking about, these ones? Well, don't show these if you're not talking about this. Seen. Uh, these are pictures of the Apollo uh, 17, Apollo 14, and Apollo 12 landing sites, giving us the clearest view of where the... Look at these images. Look at these little pixel changes. This little nonsense. Astronauts went, where they sampled, uh, where they conducted scientific experiments on the astronaut footprints footprints from 15 miles high now i don't mean to interrupt here but i want to go ahead and head back to google maps for a moment and these pictures of the park next to my house i want to draw your attention to these tire tracks right here and the paint lines in the parking lot which are about eight inches wide. The surface. Mm -hmm. So these are images that were taken by an instrument uh, called the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Camera. It's an instrument on the LRO mission. When I first took a look at these images, you know, my jaw dropped to the ground. Right, because they're fake. When you see something that you've never seen before and in a quality that you've never seen before. This is good. This is sharply illustrates. This is high quality. I could do this in paint shop in two minutes. It really just made me speechless. So Jaron goes on to talk about how he can do this in paint shop and, you know, he scoffs at whether or not this could possibly be real. He, he declares it to be fake. He doesn't present any sort of evidence other than his own personal incredulity. But I guess just saying it is enough for him. And apparently it's enough for some of his audience. He's got over 100,000 subscribers. I guess there's not a lot of truth seeking and discernment there. Well, here's one thing that Jaron didn't count on, and that is the fact these aren't just isolated pictures. There's actually photographs from the Apollo 12 mission, and here they are. And what you can do with these photographs is you can compare things seen on the ground, so to say, with Apollo 12 versus what we're seeing on this Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter picture. Like, for, for instance, this A-cell array, which is kind of like a... A triangular array with a large instrument package here at the end and then smaller boxes at either at either end. You can clearly see that in the insert in the upper left corner and it looks exactly like this. You can see Surveyor 3 and Surveyor 3 is out by that crater on the right. If you look where the um, the base of the lunar lander is if you go directly at the three o'clock position, that you'll see a large crater and you'll see a series of footprints going out there. There's the surveyor that they were going to, and there is the lunar module. So that's the problem that he runs into with this claim that this is all Photoshop, because there are photographs from the ground and from other angles that confirm these things. The topography is, is confirmatory. So just claiming something is photoshopped without proving that it's photoshopped and showing it bears no relationship to, say, these photographs that were taken at the time of the mission is ridiculous. Let's continue. Uh, you can see some of the experiments that were left behind sitting on the surface 40 years ago. You can see the you can experiments. see where they are, still sitting there. Look at these white dots. You can see these white dots. On the, on the lunar surface. I believe it now. 
Uh, these are some of the, the most uh, amazing images of the moon that I've ever seen because they really put uh, into sort of a really cool context of what was done well, it's always back a, in Apollo. It's always a cool context of what was done during Apollo. Uh, thank you, official nerd uh, Noah Petro. So there you have it, folks. The moon landings are fake because Jared can't believe that they're real. It doesn't present any evidence that they're fake. It matches exactly what was taken on the ground, so to say, when we were on the moon during the missions. Now we can see the same sights from space, and they look exactly the same. And 80,000 feet? How high does an SR-71 fly? And how much detail does its photographs have? You don't think that it can't see trails in the moon dust? And this is a designated satellite designed specifically to photograph those types of details on the moon. Imagine that, though. There's a craft in orbit of the moon that is only 13 miles over... What? 13 miles? Are they kidding me? Are you kidding me? 13 miles is, you know, 68,000 feet. So you have a craft in orbit of the moon that's 68,000 feet above the... What? My brain hurts. Well, Jaron, if you had actually used your brain, you would have an excuse for it hurting. For example, you don't believe that there is a, a lunar reconnaissance orbiter in orbit 13 miles above the moon. That's fine. Where are your calculations to show that that's an impossible orbit? Where are your calculations to show it's a possible orbit for that matter? What is your evidence that this is not what is being presented? You know, it's like the one last orbit flight around the poles. Everybody's saying, well, the plane wasn't there. Great. Show me a photograph of the plane sitting on a runway in New Jersey when it's supposed to be over Antarctica. If not, the plane's where it said it was. We show you actual photographs of the equipment from the Apollo missions sitting on the moon, but you can't believe it. We point out the fact those photographs match the mapped location of the experiments exactly. You don't believe that. We talk about civilians being able to see evidence of the moon landings. That's very true. Universities bounce lasers off those reflectors all the time. We have NASA. We have the Japanese Space Agency. We have, I think, the Chinese even matched up the mountains at one of the sites. But these all confirm that we were actually there. So, what can I say? The only evidence that you present is that you don't believe it because you don't want to believe it. All right. The evidence is there that we did it. So, guys, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by the channel. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the lower right corner. Subs haven't been real forthcoming in the last couple of weeks. So if you guys enjoy my videos and you aren't subscribed, take a moment and join Team Bob. You can also have a look at my websites and my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. If you do, that's wonderful and it's much appreciated. If you don't, I'll continue to put out great content free of charge to everybody. But it is expensive to run this channel and if you can give me a little help, five bucks every month, that would be wonderful. So, y'all take care. Thank you very much for stopping by. I do appreciate your support of the channel and I'll be seeing you again soon.